Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So how are you all over today? Yeah, all fine. All good here uh, over in Germany. Uh, weather is pretty nice. Uh, it's all uh, set up and I'm very excited to have this webinar here again. How about you, Frederick? Um, very well, um, except I can't really see you right now. So if they can switch the camera so we can have a visual of oh. you rather than the AVR. Here there we, we go. Welcome again. Today's session is covering the new uh, cinema series of Morans, and uh, that's actually very exciting because it's really something completely new. Because it not only technical side we did uh, uh, a lot of modification uh, to enhance the performance, to enhance the functionality, to enhance uh, the user experience overall, but also we changed the design uh, following the new uh, luxury Morans design. So. And uh, we put up a new slogan for the cinema series, which is actually sound for what you see. You know, TV, uh, televisions, 4K, today the picture quality is so great. Uh, you get so many details, so many resolution, HDR, whatsoever. And uh, so the sound uh, shouldn't fall short here. And with the new cinema series, we are here to yeah, get on par to make the sound uh, fitting the what you see. Let me quickly step back here and uh, let you explain where Marantz is today. So we are offering heritage performance in a contemporary luxury. So that's actually how you can see it on the, on the top layer, uh, on top uh, of the page as well. Uh, if you look the car on the left to the car on the right, it's, I would guess, about 70 years in between. So very similar to how it is with Marantz. We also have the 70 years anniversary next year. So we're really getting close to these 70s. Um, but uh, if you look to the car on the left, it's built just purely to go off-road and to bring you from A to B. And uh, it doesn't matter how rough the road is itself. Uh, today, this car on the right-hand side does actually still do the same. It can bring you off-road to any point A and B. But um, it is much more comfortable because you have a better suspension system, you have better engine, you have better gearbox. So it's all evolved over the years. And uh, that's, of course, just the, let's say, the performance level, but also the design completely changed. And it's much more luxury, not only from the appearance, but also what you find inside if you go to seats and um, the material used and so on. So it's really evolved over the years but it kept the um, DNA, so what the car did stand for. And that's actually the same we have with Morans. So our amplification is always the heritage. Uh, we uh, live over years, over years, over years. So because it's uh, our heart actually, uh, be the amplification in an amplifier or in CD player, because also there you have it in the output stages, be it a streamer, whatever you call it, it's still in Morans and that's actually what delivers the most musical sound. So the heritage we have, the knowledge we have, we just carry it on, but we refine it, we evolve over the years and we bring it now into contemporary luxury with a new design. So the most musical sound, as said, is a slogan for home cinema. That's what we are after. That's what we want to have. And we reach it by our luxury craftsmanship. That's the way how. I think that's also a good story to tell to your customers in shop. I put up some benefits, emotional benefits uh, for the customer. Yeah, Marans Home Cinema will make you feel so um, in in different way. You will get uh, indulged. You can, uh, yeah, you just have a very nice experience. You just want to continue to watch movies because it's so nice. You get closer than ever because of the immersive sound performance. You really get into the sound field and you can be proud of your choice because actually with a new design it's a piece you actually don't want to hide but you want to show it to your friends you can be proud of what you bought you're using the best in class performance products nice looking ones on the technical side on the functionality side is uh, that the Marans uh, will improve your viewing experience because the audio quality we are going to deliver is um, on a very high level because we use latest technologies. We have the luxury quality. Yes, yeah, so um, the, the 
product is built with the 70 years of experience. And we have the signature sound of Marans, which is a warm sound. And each product, as explained in former sessions already, will get sound tuned, bring to the Marans sound quality by our sound master. Let me start uh, with a video which we created that's nicely, um, let's say, putting it all together to get the emotion and the technical aspect over via video. So I think this uh, video nicely demonstrates uh, how it comes together. It's the, the emotion, the, the, the visuals, the, the, the videos, the music, uh, but also the technical side with uh, the old camera stuff uh, we put in there. So it's all nicely comes together. And this video is also available for you to uh, put it on your websites. So you can all find it on our media hub, which is the hub, and you can uh, download from here. So then let's dig into the new cinema series. Uh, first of all, let me inform you about the naming, which also has changed uh, from uh, current um, AV receivers or AV separates. You already have seen with the with Hi-Fi product that we are using model for, for the amplifier. We do use uh, CD or SACD for CD player. And we are going to change also the naming for AV receivers. And uh, we do have for the AV receivers, we put up the name Cinema, which actually much more express what the product is uh, be used for. So it's for to create your Cinema. And we have uh, also the numbering changed from, uh, uh, yeah, we adapted actually the, the premium number in where the lower the number, the better the quality of the product is. So we do start with the Cinema 70S, the S stands for slim, small. Then we have Cinema 60, 50, 40. Uh, which will all still come this year or beginning of next year with the Cinema 40. And uh, on top of these, we have the AV separates, the AV10 and M10, which then will come in uh, February next year. So this will be um, yeah, the new naming convention for this product, for the Cinema series slash uh, our AV AMP uh, solution. So then uh, let's have another look to... Uh, then the key points, the highlights of the cinema series is, so of course, the uh, luxury design. As I already explained, so we're adapting the new design to these products. We have the new uh, user experience. We did a lot of work on the graphical user interface and the way the customer can operate actually the product. Advanced performance. We always are eager to uh, level up the quality of the products. As you know, we, we did some work here as well. And we added new features by new technologies, by new DSPs, and so on. So all together, it will be the start of a new luxury home cinema era. So going into the luxury industry design, um, I think it's a bit of a, yeah, static, just having it here on a PowerPoint presentation, but you can see on the left-hand side, the old design, and the right-hand side, our new luxury contemporary design. And I will ask Roland again to switch cameras because we also have these products over here. And I can nicely show you these products live. You can already see that uh, we have the Cinema 60 down here uh, in uh, silver gold color. Uh, so this is a full size um, product, of course, with this curved back panels and the center uh, shell over here, uh, the back shell and the center piece over here. Then we go slightly up because there's the one I love most design-wise, uh, which is the Slim, the Cinema uh, 70S. Uh, and here you can see how nicely elegant this all fits together with the portal display and direct access knobs here, very balanced uh, layout and uh, the slim height of the product itself. And then on top of this one, we have the Cinema 50, uh, which then uh, comes uh, with uh, yeah, a very even cleaner design because you only see the uh, input selector and the volume control uh, because the rest of the control functionality is hidden behind the trapdoor. 
So that's also very elegant and uh, it's really a nice step up in the performance, which is as well our remote. I hope you can see it here well. So it's following also the remote style like we introduced with the Model 30 and SACV 30N. It's the same elegance uh, layout and uh, yeah, you have the, the curved leaf in, in, uh, in the center here with a nice ring following the, the porthole display, which we also have on the products. So it's a nice match. And what is pretty cool feature on the new remote is that we have a button here on the, on the side, which actually activates the backlit function. Yeah, so I hope you can see it well. Um, so that's uh, pretty nice and uh, you know, it's a great feature, especially for uh, use within uh, uh, cinema rooms. Okay, then uh, let's go on with the presentation. I talked about the uh, new graphic user interface already briefly. So the user experience, if he is going to enter the setup menu or if he is going to uh, start the setup assistant in the product, it will be now in high resolution, much nicer graphics, uh, much nicer uh, yeah, um, text uh, and fonts we can use here now. And uh, it's a 1080, P resolution, so it nicely fits the 4K screens of today. And we also have more space actually to explain certain functionalities and setting by the help text. Uh, if you look to the setup assistant, also here, we changed quite a lot to optimize the performance and to optimize the flow for the customer to make it even easier to hook the system up because adding functionality means also often adding complexity but this complexity, of course, we don't want to let the customer feel or experience. We just want to let them experience the ease of use and the easy setup of the product. Uh, as well here, we have the information uh, which type of apps are available for the product and the direct QR code to download these. So that also makes it easier for the customer to access uh, all the needed apps or the options uh, if you're looking to the Odyssey app which is of course also supported by all of the SKUs. With the Odyssey app, you can go deeper under the hood and uh, do more, let's say, customized uh, calibration settings for your system. Then we had some changes on the, um, on the remote app as well. Uh, we are adding a functionality, uh, which is uh, called web control. You know, we have a web interface for all our products. If you obtain the IP address, uh, you type it into your web browser, you get a window and can do all settings of the products within uh, the web interface, within uh, via your computer. That's uh, possible, of course, but you still need to get the IP address first and type it in. So there's a little hurdle. Now, with, uh, we added this web control access to the normal remote app. By that, you just click on the web control and you get the window shown on your iPad, iPhone, whatsoever. So it's very easy to access. And this uh, enables you to do a setup even without the TV screen attached to the, to the unit. So that's kind of remote setup within, let's say the same network you're in. And then here again, the remote. Yeah, so for the daily operation, it's nice to have something in your hand which feels good and which adds the right uh, functionality. I already explained the, uh, the backlit uh, function. We took off the color button, but the functionality is still there, of course. We have the smart select one to four, and we have the sound mode buttons with uh, movie, music, game, and pure. They still uh, all exist. What we added in addition is an HDMI out switch. So for the units like uh, Cinema 60 and up, where we do have uh, two HDMI outputs, these can be easily switched via this button. So if you have a TV screen uh, connected, a projector connected, you don't have to go to the uh, unit itself to press a button on the front or go via the setup uh, uh, menu to select what kind of video output you want to have. No, it's now accessible via the uh, remote. So that's very handy. And to even enhance the, the user experience already from the first uh, uh, yeah, touch of the product, from the first uh, contact with the product, we also changed the packaging. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see the current packaging where all the, the 
you have remote and uh, documentation, everything is separated and you have some plastic bags where it's uh, put in, so it looks a bit cluttered. While uh, on the new cinema series, we also adapt what we have done on the Model 30, SACD 30N, we have an accessory box. So that's a nice carton box with some Marins printing on. And inside you will find the antennas, the remote, and also all the documentation. So it's very clean and uh, nice to, to, yeah, to unpack. So you get a nice unpack experience here as well. Talking about carton box, uh, it's now all uh, FSC certified. So we are using some material uh, so where we can be sure it's um, yeah not coming somewhere from the rainforest but uh, actually it's a uh, controlled uh, carton box uh, material and uh, that's a little step to to be more green. Weimar runs uh, I just put up some pictures over here just to bring it back into your mind so I talked uh, at the beginning about the amplification that's our heritage and uh, that's our goal or, or, or wait for the most musical sound on the top left, you can see the high quality amplification. That's the uh, power amp section actually of the AV receiver. Then going clockwise, we ex have extended connectivity. We have uh, a strong, powerful main transformer. In addition to that, of course, the strong power supply with the customized uh, main capacitors where you actually pull all the energy out if there's action going on. But also when you listen to music and you will just have a yeah, the, the finest details in the music or in the movie, in silent scenes, that's all guaranteed that you will hear that because we have a very clean and powerful power supply. Um, the picture in the middle shows you the DSP, uh, which is uh, also, of course, a, a key element in our products because it does all the signal processing, gives you all the uh, uh, access to the audio, uh, different audio formats and so on. And on the left-hand side, the lower left-hand picture, that's our head, uh, network module, the HEOS module, which is uh, yeah, our gateway to the outside to get uh, uh, the music streaming, to get AirPlay, Bluetooth, etc. PP. Okay, so then let's uh, dig a bit into the cinema series itself, the per product. Uh, we have the cinema 50, 60, and 70. S, please don't forget the S uh, when you type the number because the S stands for slim. And uh, let's uh, have a quick overview about uh, the key features, uh, the, the key points, the focus points uh, for, for this whole series. Of course, luxury design, I explained. Uh, we talked about the cinema naming convention already. Uh, we optimize the HDMI connectivity to, for 8K uh, devices, at least three uh, for 70 and S and 60, but uh, from 50 onwards, all our inputs are 8K. We have the new HD GUI, which you already have seen. We have a preamplifier mode, which I'm going to explain. Improved HDAM, uh, our hyperdynamic amplifier module. I'm also coming back to that one again. So this will be used for Cinema 60 and 50 and up, of course. And then especially on the Cinema 50, we did a lot of uh, modification when it comes to all the processing side uh, because we have a new DSP, digital signal processor, the Griffin Light XP, which is, gives us the possibility to have over 3D IMAX in hand, but also direct live uh, upgradability and the support of four subwoof output. But let's see, let's go a bit more into the details on the following pages. First of all, as you already have seen, all products are available in two colors, the black and the silver gold. So uh, pretty nice. I, I'm Always when I see these uh, nice uh, pictures or if I see the products live, I'm really excited because they are looking so cool and so much uh, more Morans uh, and so much more contemporary, so much more luxury. So really great stuff. So let's have a look into the Cinema 70S. So it's a unique solution because actually it's the only slim receiver available on the market so there's no other competition really going into this field especially not with uh, the feature set we do have on this unit here because it's all covered you get all the functions all the processing you would expect also from a bigger size avr or let's say full size avr but it's all packed into this slim uh, cabinet here so of course it comes to um down to that uh, the, the power inside the product itself can't be as high if you uh, in comparison to a full-size product so you will have seven time 
50 watt. However, what we added to this product as something new is uh, that we first of all have a, from the former unit, we had a 2.2 channel pre-outs only. We extended this now to a full pre-out. So we have a 7.2 channel pre-out, which actually makes it, uh, yeah, let's say utilize it, this product to be used as a pure pre-amplifier. So you can even hook it up in big installation systems. So especially for CI dealers, this might be a very interesting product because low height means that you don't need a lot of rack space, but you get the full uh, functionality. And if you need much more power, you just hook up your um, external power amplifiers to the unit itself. And to guarantee that in this type of configuration, you also get the best performance from the uh, pre-outs, we also did some changes. So we added a so-called pre-amplifier mode. The pre-amplifier mode, so in today's products, we have one pre-amplifier mode, which actually says, okay, I can do all preamplifiers, or I can do all speakers and all uh, preamplifier outputs at the same time. However, that is uh, eating some flexibility. And if you run the speaker outputs and the preamplifier outputs parallel, you will have some limitation on the maximum output voltage you can get from your pre-outs. As you can see here, it goes up to roughly 1.8 volts. So that's what uh, is on, on the lower scale. As said, roughly 1.8 volt you can get out of your pre-outs before distortion starts to rise. However, now we added a new feature, which is called pre-amplifier mode, which actually adds a switch, which you can see on the top uh, uh, circle, uh, into the signal line, where we can disconnect actually the power amplifier and disconnect the speaker path. So that means the unit will only work for the pre-outs and that we can do per channel pair. So let's say left, right, front or uh, left, right, surround or just center. And by doing this disconnection of the power amplifier, we actually can get more signal level out of the pre-outs. So you can see from the form of 1.8, uh, we now can easily go up to two and a half to three volt of uh, uh, output signal on the pre-out. This means you get a better driving signal for your external power amplifiers. Yeah, so you can drive them, let's say harder, louder, whatever you like to call it, but at least you can drive it cleaner. Yeah, you get a better sound performance. And that's the way how we solved it uh, in, or integrated it in the um, user interface. So in the speaker setup, you actually do have an option to set speaker plus pre-out. So that's uh, shown in the rectangle, uh, red rectangle area here, speaker plus pre-out, or you can change it to just pre-out. And as said, you can do it individual for front, center, surround. So that really gives a lot of flexibility for the use of the product beside, of course, that the Cinema 70S is really a nice fit into any living room where space is an issue or where you don't want to have uh, big uh, AV solutions, but something very elegant. So Cinema 70S can be used there, but as well very nicely in CI projects. And as already mentioned, uh, going to HDMI connectivity here, uh, we already uh, you know, increased the number of, of uh, the 8K capable inputs from uh, to three for the Cinema 70S and the 60. And for all above, we are adding uh, yeah, or giving the functionality, full functionality of 8K to all of the inputs. And uh, what is most important is that uh, not having just the inputs on the unit, but also the reliability of these units, uh, of the uh, connectors and the compatibility with uh, all the uh, kind of TV brands on the market, projectors, and also uh, uh, source material, source players on the market, set-up boxes, computers, whatsoever, you name it. So to guarantee, you know, HDMI is always a kind of tricky connection uh, because you have uh, copy protection, handshake issues, and so on and so on. To have a wide compatibility um, of the Marantz components with all the different TV 
brands or source player, we always join the so-called plug fest. At these plug fest, we do meet uh, uh, other manufacturers having HMI equipment coming together, trying out our products with their equipment, identified issues uh, where we uh, already can, before the product is coming to market, find solutions so that the customer itself, the user, will not experience any issues. So this gives us a high level of uh, compatibility with all kinds of devices on the market. So I think that's also a very strong argument for the Morans uh, receivers. Um, let's jump on to the Cinema 60, uh, which is also available as a DAB version, a dedicated one. So it's either with or without DAB. Um, uh, pay attention to, to the type number, uh, please. Um, the Cinema 60 actually is uh, specification-wise, functionality-wise, very similar to the uh, Cinema 70S. However, it adds, uh, of course, more power to it. It has seven times 100 watts, so it's already uh, ready to drive mid-size uh, installation very easily and nice. And um, what we have here as well for the first time in the cinema lineup is that we apply our HDAM technology, so our hyperdynamic amplifier module, which really pushes the sound performance of the unit itself. And it does come with two HDMI outputs so that you actually can connect TV and projector and then switch via the remote handset between these. Let's have a look to HDM again, uh, just to get you a better idea where actually it sits in the uh, product itself. So from left to right, it's input, volume control, amplification, output. And to really in the center, just behind the volume control, the HDM is located. And the HDM, you see it's really into the signal path and pl plays a key role uh, for the performance of the product. So the HDM actually pushes the signal to the outs, or to, to the pre-outs or to the power amplifier. And the nice thing is with the HDM um, that it, yeah, we can tune it. So let me show the next picture. That's actually where it's all started, beginning of the 90s. Uh, some hand drawings have been made uh, by our Japanese colleague uh, to come up with a new idea, how to replace ICs, integrated circuitries, uh, by just uh, separate components. And uh, this has been done because we wanted to have something which is really uh, fast, actually uh, having a wide bandwidth to really follow any, any uh, frequency easily. So also going up to SACD uh, quality, uh, but also having something which is very low, uh, which has a very low noise level. Yeah? So the lower the noise gets, the cleaner and the more shinier is the audio signal you can uh, go into here. So you have the pure audio uh, with uh, low noise, high dynamics, high bandwidth. And the good thing is that we can, as it's all made by separate components, we can tweak the circuitry and uh, tune the sound quality of our products by tweaking these parts. And of course, these uh, um, modules also evolve over the years. So we always find new components, new way of constructions, better transistors, and so on to optimize the performance. And that's also what we have done this year again. And I'm going to show it to you, you on, on this picture here. So uh, it's comparing the HDM solution used for the uh, SR5015, uh, that's a green line actually, and uh, compare it to the red line, the Cinema 60 uh, HDM solution. And what you can see is that, uh, that we again have the possibility to run higher volume levels or uh, output levels of the uh, HM circuitry with the lower THD. So also here we really did a big step again to improve uh, the quality of the HDM. One more comment to HDMs. Uh, you might have read that there's HDM SA2 and SA3. It's not about that SA3 is better than SA2. It's just uh, different naming for different application. We use it in, in buffer stages. We use it as a filter. We uh, use it uh, for uh, amplifying the signal itself. So uh, just to let you know, HDAM, our own technology, uh, fully customizable by using uh, separate components. 
and that can be used to tune the sound in the direction we want to have it. And from left to right, you can see now Cinema 50 HDM board. In the center, you have the Cinema 60 HDM board. You already can see it's it's a different uh, talk here, a different uh, layout. So if you go up in the class, of course, uh, it's much more effort put into uh, uh, into the product because it's also yeah we have more let's say money to spend to do it even better. And for the Cinema 50, we have 11.4 channel uh, to to cope with while on the Cinema 60 it's 7.2 as a buffer board. The Cinema 70S does not feature um, HDM, but you also can see here that we have a pretty clean layout of the product itself. Now going into the uh, top one of uh, today's webinar, that's the Cinema 50, of course. That's where we enter the nine channel of amplification uh, leak. Uh, we do have uh, nine times 110 watt amplification bit in. The product itself can process 11.4 channels. Yeah, so with external amplification, you even can do a full blown up system with 11.4. And four actually stands for four independent subwoofers. I'm coming to that one a bit later as well. So. Um, yeah, let's just jump directly into the technologies, what makes this product uh, so different to, to the former units and what differentiates it really to uh, a Cinema 60 here as well. So uh, in the uh, center, actually uh, the heart for all the audio uh, processing is the DSP, digital signal processor, and we applied a new solution here, it's a Griffin Light X XP, uh, shock DSP, so Griffin Light uh, shock DSP so far we also use for the SR7015 and the SR8015 and the uh, AV processor, the AV8805 and AV7706. However, it wasn't used on the SR6015. Now the Cinema 50, of course, is also a bit more expensive than the 6015. We had the chance to apply this Griffin Light XP. Uh, processor and this gives us additional processing power which gives us additional functionality. First of all it's uh, over 3D as you already know it from SO7015 it's a very nice um, audio format uh, where we have a certain number of titles in the field process uh, decoded with over 3D however it also comes with a very nice uh, aromatic which uh, does upsampling um, of uh, any kind of audio signal. It can be also Dolby Atmos or uh, DTSX code, uh, coded. It can be upsampled by the aromatic, which really makes it uh, possible to get even more information from the top layers. Because you know we have uh, the floor layer, layer one, a uh, height layer. But on top of that one, we also have a third layer. Uh, that's a unique uh, uh, feature of our 3D where you really have a yeah, the voice of, uh, voice of God or a center height uh, channel, for example. But we also can use this technology in a 3.12 or 2.12 setup. So it's also very flexible. And we have IMAX enhanced, uh, yeah, to really get the IMAX experience already in the class of a Cinema 50. Then we do have uh, the support of MPEG-H audio, uh, which is actually a broadcast standard. Uh, from uh, Fraunhofer Institute and uh, broadcasting is not uh, happening in uh, Europe right now but it's uh, in Korea we have it, uh, it will be in Brazil as well, uh, the new standard for uh, broadcasting to have a multi-channel up to 16 channel in this case uh, of uh, object-based uh, or bed-based uh, uh, channels uh, but uh, having this MPEG-H capability in our receivers enables us as well to support 360 reality audio, also surround yeah, immersive music reproduction. Coming to back, uh, back to that one on the next slide. We have Dirac Live uh, upgradability, that's also a feature uh, which now starts from the Cinema 50 and will go up. And we have the four independent subwoofer outputs. Let's have a quick look to 360 reality audio. That's actually uh, yeah, music coded in, uh, in, uh, as an immersive experience. 
uh, to give you an immersive experience. It's uh, 360 uh, coded. It's from Sony and it's available uh, or accessible via Amazon Music HD, Tidal and Nuxnet actually are the, the ones uh, which are really uh, the, the key uh, services uh, supporting 360 reality audio, also known as 360 RA. Um, how can you receive it or how can you experience it today? You need a streaming service, uh, which I just mentioned. You need a Google Chromecast, which actually uh, gets connected to your HDMI input of the Cinema 50. And then the decoder, the DSP, which I just mentioned, the Griffin Light XP will decode the MPEG-H audio stream and gives you, give you the uh, immersive surround experience. Yeah, on the right hand side, that's a screenshot uh, of the information of uh, the um, receiver. And you can see in the rectangle, red one, it's mentioned MPEG-H as audio format. So right now it's uh, available via Google Chromecast, but uh, Fire TV Stick is also going to hit the market November, December. So uh, we still have to wait here to, to get it uh, available. Then let's have a quick look to Dirac Live. Uh, I think most of you are aware of Dirac. So uh, let me start with the explanation that Dirac is not going to replace Odyssey in our products. Odyssey is still our number one room correction technology, which will we will continue in our products, of course, because it's a very capable solution. It's a very easy to operate solution, even by end users, because we can guide them through our setup assistant through the whole setup process, or even for advanced users, if they want to use our Odyssey Mighty EQ app to do some more, let's say, specific settings, customized settings, that's all possible with Odyssey. And it's a very powerful tool. So we will stick to that one. But on top of that, to give the customer, especially the, let's say, CI dealers an option, uh, we adding the Dirac uh, Live uh, capability, upgradability. Uh, this feature will be available from um, beginning, yeah, let's say spring uh, 2023. So target is right now is uh, to get it live in March. And uh, then it's possible to have direct live calibration on the Cinema 50. It does work in the way that you have to buy a license for direct live. Uh, you're running direct live on your computer. Uh, the microphone me for, for measuring the room acoustic is actually connected to your computer. So you have to buy a separate microphone. It's not working with a microphone put into the carton box coming with the unit. There are different uh, um, uh, packages available from Dirac. So all the access or all the purchase of a license is done via the Dirac uh, website. So we are out of uh, this business actually, so it's all handled by Dirac. Uh, there are different packages available, a limited package which limits the frequency range uh, for, for the correction from 20 to 500 hertz while you also have the full frequency range uh, response correction, which goes from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. And there's also another functionality, which is uh, the base correction, but that's not uh, into the first update package we are going to deliver uh, in, in spring 2023, but that will be most likely by early 2024. So again, it's not going to replace our Odyssey. Odyssey will stay, Direct Live will be on top for the specialist uh, uh, customers or CI dealers. Uh, you know we have the presets, one and two speaker presets. What you actually can do is run or set uh, preset one to Odyssey and preset two uh, to direct calibration information. Okay, that's so far on Direct Live. Then let's have a quick look into the four subwoofer output because that's, uh, I think, something quite unique and something very powerful. Uh, I heard from, uh, yeah, from many colleagues now uh, that they use this technology on shows and they have been blown away by the performance you can achieve with the four subwoofers. It's not about having more bass actually in the room, but it's about having more equal bass over the room. So 
that you know, yeah, you 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 actually, you know, if you have bass, you have standing waves. Yeah, so it's a very long wave, uh, which means you can have standing waves in your room, which means on one spot, on one seating spot, the bass level can be very high and boomy, while on another spot, it can be too low and you don't feel or hear any bass. So to cover this out, to get uh, the, the bass spread over the room equally, you can add more subwoofers. Of course, you already can improve with having two subwoofers, but it gets even better with having four subwoofers. By that, you can spread the base nice in the room. We thought one step further, because what I've just described is that you use the subwoofer in a so-called standard mode. That means the subwoofers will get uh, the LFE signal adjusted uh, to the level, and, and you can adjust the phase uh, in the subwoofer itself, not on this, uh, in, in the setup menu, but you can adjust the level. So by that you can spread equally the, the base. What we put in as well as additional function is uh, the directional mode. And here it's really getting interesting because now we can actually, let's say, allocate the subwoofer to a certain position so that uh, you have a subwoofer front left, a subwoofer front right, rear left, rear right, and you can also direct signals to the subwoofer, not only the LFE signal, but also dedicated uh, uh, low frequency signals from your, let's say, uh, front left speakers, and the center will be sent to the front left subwoofer. Signals from the front right speaker will be sent to the front right subwoofer. And the same also for, for the rear. Rear speakers on the right hand side will get uh, also or will also push some of the subwoofer information to the rear right subwoofer. So by that you actually get a directional subwoofer and it really gives you a nice feeling about uh, yeah, where actually the base is from, uh, which direction it's coming from and uh, it really gets you much more into the scene. So that's a pretty cool feature and I also pictured it here again. So on the left picture you can see if you work with two subwoofers, for example, you can left and right uh, do the separation. And um, on the left subwoofer, subwoofer you will get all the base information from the speakers located in the blue field, uh, which are set to small. For all, the uh, for all the speakers set to small, the subwoofer or the base information will be sent to the subwoofer front left. Same counts, of course, for the right. And if you go for four subwoofers, I think it's easily explained, it's self-explaining what you see on the right-hand side. It's really getting directed. So that's a pretty cool feature. What we also have as possibility is uh, that we can assign the subwoofer four output to uh, drive a uh, tactile transducer also known as butt kicker or butt shaker, uh, which actually gets uh, yeah, installed underneath your sofa or your seat. And uh, it will give you the bass impact directly to your sofa because it's not that you hear the bass, but you feel the bass, which actually really gets you the force uh, dimension by getting the next kick uh, when, a, when a heavy bass attack comes from the LFE signal is feed to the butt kicker, which then transforms this yeah, physical uh, uh, move to your sofa. And uh, you can run this uh, asset on subwoofer output 4, which still leaves you three output, uh, subwoofer outputs to do uh, the directional mode, yeah? front left, front right, and one for, for the rear, for example. So it's all there. Just having a side-by-side -side look to Cinema 50, 60, and 70S, uh, you see a number of uh, HDMI inputs, 8K uh, capable, all of them on the Cinema 50, three uh, on the 60 and 70S, uh, while uh, yeah, the number of outputs also is uh, three on the Cinema 50, two on the 60, one on the 70S. Power indication, 9 channel of amplification, processing power, as said, Cinema 50 is coming with the new Griffin Light XP DSP. So you have the 11.4 channels, while the other one do the 7.1. Uh, 
the new HDAM uh, upgrade uh, we did. Um, then we have the main capacitors, which these are the ones sitting in the power supply to deliver the energy when needed. Dolby Atmos, of course, all of them uh, feature, but on top of that, Cinema 50 is doing Oro 3D, IMAX Enhanced, MPEG-H, 360 Reality Audio, and uh, the upgradability with uh, Direct Live. So I think it's a very strong package uh, I introduced to you today uh, with the new cinema series. So it's really a nice move into the future, into the new era of uh, the modern cinema series. It's really, uh, yeah, sound for what you see. That's uh, again, uh, actually what I'm just uh, mentioned to you already in the summary here. Uh, we do have uh, this lineup of products for coming this year. Uh, 50 and 60 are already uh, available now. Cinema 70 coming next month. And uh, beginning of the year, then we will have the AV10, M10, and then in March, uh, the Cinema 40 to really complete the, the product introduction for 20 two slash early 23 uh, um, Marons lineup. Okay, here once again the nice remote with a backlit just to remind you and um, thank you very much for listening so far. Uh, you will get the presentation uh, uh, sent via a link and uh, on the next slides which are now coming, additional 20s roughly, I put in an appendix where you also find more detailed information that you can use to, to go a bit deeper and uh, get more uh, details out of uh, what I've already explained to you here, but that would now kill the time frame we have. So we are ready to go for questions and answers. Uh, Frederick, hello. Hi, thanks Oliver. That was very, very comprehensive. Um, we have plenty of questions. Uh, right off the bat, a first question. I'm not sure if we're able to talk about the pricing for Direct, which is on slide 65. So if you get the handout, you will have information there. Can we review a little bit of a ballpark figure? Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, set by Direct, as said, and it's uh, starting with, um, out of my head, it's 299, I think. And uh, through, uh, I will do it quickly, huh? Come on. Yeah, I'm That's checking right. right now. So the room correction uh, that you will get with limited bandwidth is starting at 259 yeah. US dollars. 259. Full yeah. bandwidth would be 349. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I mentioned that we will have the base control functionality as well somewhere in the second phase, which will be 2024. And you can see the additional pricing here for single subwoofer or multi subwoofer calibration. So 2459, 349, it's what you have to work with uh, today. Which brings us to the next question. Um, you were talking about the IP address at one point. I'm not sure if you have covered it into the advanced CI features. How can you find out the IP address? Yeah, very easy. Uh, Roland, do you mind to swap cameras? So because we built in a new feature. Um, yeah, actually, if you uh, connect your receiver to to the network, you still uh, can get into the setup menu itself. And um, uh, into the setup menu network functionality, you can uh, see the IP address. However, we also built in a feature now that uh, if you press the status button for about five seconds, the display will change and you will get the in. Oh, <laughs> it's now saying no network because it's not connected to the network. But uh, if the unit is connected to the network, you will see the IP address here. And with uh, pressing on the uh, uh, status button, you can toggle through different information as well, like MAC address and so on. But as, uh, just to repeat, status button, press and hold for five seconds. And uh, instead of no network, you would see the IP address. Very easy to access. So we have a couple more questions about Direct Live. Uh, live, does that mean that we need to be connected to the internet for it to work, or can it be used without internet? To identify the product and to download the license, you need access to the internet. For the calibration itself, as far as I know, you don't need it. Yeah, so it's then really a local solution. So it's it basically your intranet, so you have to be able to see through the internet 
uh, your laptop basically picks up the, the impulse responses and then from there the calculations are done and then you can save that and send it to the AVR. I think that's how it works, right? Similar to exactly, Odyssey, yeah. but then so, so instead of internal, units, using the laptop. Yeah, right. Both units, of course, need to be connected to the same network. Okay, and then Fennel is also asking, um, when we do not opt for direct, does it mean we can still use Odyssey? So that was obviously answered, and you can use them simultaneously using these speaker presets. So you're able to literally compare one system versus the other if you wish to do so. Exactly, yeah. So there's no need to, to um, get direct. So uh, you, as said, Odyssey is our number one calibration solution which is will stay into our products. And it's easy to use and operate for the customer. He doesn't need to go online. He doesn't need to buy any license. It's all, let's say, already paid and he is getting a microphone and our nice paper rocket as microphone stand so to follow proper uh, calibration. By directional subwoofer, does the DSP manage it with phase and time correction? Uh, no, no phase correction. Time, yeah, that's, yeah, because you can set the, the distance. So that's where you get the time management, but not phase correction. Okay, when you introduce the, um, the three models, uh, they have a very nice front panel and then they have the back plate. So which ones of the uh, cinema series have a, uh, this, the aluminium uh, front panel? So that will start from the Cinema 40. So the three we have over here. Oh no, sorry, the Cinema 50 already has it. Yeah, so 70S and uh, 60 is uh, um, uh, mold while the uh, um, the 50 already has uh, the metal. So the model with the trap door. Yeah, it's a, it's a resin compound that they use for this. It's very solid. It's a similar feel to stainless steel or to aluminum, but of course to get the cost uh, differentiated between the different models, some of them have different types of materials as uh, Oliver just mentioned. The next mm -hmm. question, uh, is there a new model for the NR1200 stereo receiver? Which is the two uh, channel. Not, not, not for this year. Yeah, of course, at one point, we were also going to change to the new design, but it's not defined when this is going to happen. Um, I know that we have done some rack mounts uh, for the existing models. Will there be 19-inch rack mounting kits available for CI? Um, there is a project running in the US uh, to get rack mounts. Uh, it's not yet available here in Europe. But uh, we are looking into it to also get a, a solution uh, which we can uh, yeah, provide from, from our side. Does Odyssey perform phase alignment? Uh, no, it doesn't do any phase correction. Okay, so it can detect if a speaker is out of phase, but it's not going to make the corrections. It will do the distance and the room corrections though. Uh, another question from Vamshi. Will using the same AKM DAX or upgraded to TI DAX be the same as Denon does? So what do we know from the, the DAX that are used in, in Marantz? Uh, right now we are using um, TI and uh, ESS DAX uh, across the, in the, the different products. Uh, so there's, of course, we're always looking also into the options, uh, what can be done with AKM again, now where they're back in business. Um, that's always, uh, let's say, uh, I think I explained it in, in other webinars already, the quality of a product, it's not just defined by the DA converter you're going to use, but it's the way you, um, let's say, utilize uh, um, the DA con converter, how you put it into your application, what you put around it, and uh, what is coming from the power supply, and also what is coming in the uh, output stage, what is coming in the um, um, preamplifier stage. So all works together. It's not just uh, if I have that DA converter, it's a great product, or if I have that uh, DA converter, it's a bad product. That's not the case. Now, we're always looking for the best solution fitting uh, our needs and standards. Okay, there's a question from Paolo. Um, could you recap again the four subwoofer outputs, how you can assign them? One is front left, two is uh, front right, 
then we have uh, output three is uh, rear left and output four is rear right. That's how you use it, uh, let's say, in the directional mode. Yeah, because then the, the unit needs to know uh, where's my front left speaker or a subwoofer where I put the the base uh, uh, frequency from my front left speaker, I need to direct it to the front left subwoofer. So that's where uh, this connection needs to be. If you're just going to use it in a standard mode, of course you have the full flexibility to use uh, these um, subwoofer payouts and place the subwoofers wherever you like. If you want, you can also put four subwoofers to the front. Okay, question from Manosh from the Philippines. Uh, which cinema model will support the white channels? So up to which level do you need to go to have your white channels? White channels? Uh, out of my head, it should start with uh, Cinema 40. Yeah, or the SR7015. Mohammed is asking, why is there still no 8K 120 hertz? Because TVs are already having them. I'm not sure it is actually content that is 8K 120 hertz. Yeah, I think we are still lacking content in 8K 60 hertz, uh, to be honest. Um, I don't see any real need right now for 8K 120. I don't know what kind of application it should, be, uh, should go in. Maybe in some professional uh, studio um, um, electronic, but for sure not in the consumer field. Okay, uh, Menno is asking if the direct life license is per unit or for a one-time license for multiple units. No, no, it's per unit. Yes, that's also my understanding. Okay, let's have a look. There's a couple more coming in. Will there be a Cinema 30 or is the 40 currently the flagship or the best? I think we already said there's going to be in separates AV10 and AMP10. Mm -hmm. Today's lineup of the SR models, uh, you could guess that there might be as well something above the Cinema 40, somewhere in the future. As said, we are going to, let's say, renew our lineup uh, regularly and we also bring the new design to the other models. Moving on, uh, Richard is asking if Odyssey X is still available. And I think he's referring to the standalone software that's a little bit more advanced than the one that you have on the iOS or Android platforms, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it's still uh, available. Our products are uh, compatible with it. So, uh, but again, it's uh, not under our control. That's a really uh, a solution offered by uh, Odyssey and our products are compatible like we will be with direct live we've got a good question from max can you tell us something about the installation without a tv via the app if you don't want to do let's say the setup assistant and you don't want to use the auto calibration with with, with odyssey but you want just to do all kind of settings like uh, input rename inputs uh, um, audio video input connectors uh, uh, allocation uh, speaker manual speaker setup uh, so that you do your i don't know 9.2 uh, configuration that you can all do via the um, via the app via the web interface slash via the app yeah, so it's very handy if you are actually let's say very clear on what you want to do that's a very easy and fast way to achieve it ha huh, interesting uh, we really liked moran's university or sound united university for that matter is that going to continue i can shed a little bit of light there as most of you know we have been acquired by massimo massimo uh, will introduce uh, massimo consumer audio as a subgroup so we're no longer going to be called sound united so the little logo here is going to disappear. And for that reason, we're also transforming the whole learning online learning system. So it will be called Massimo Learning or Massimo University, something like that. So it's in the work. We're preparing lots of new information, a lot of new learning modules. It will be available uh, starting January. We will gradually, by country, open up. Let me add one here because uh... If you're looking for more product information, it's also worth to check our YouTube uh, Sound United training platform. 
because also here, these type of videos we are doing here, these webinars, will get uploaded to the Sound United Training on YouTube channel. Yeah, so um, also very informative. Is it possible to assign front, left, center, right channel in the built-in amps to other speakers and use the front LCR pre-out with a power amp to power the front three speakers? So there's some flexibility for the Cinema um, 50, of course, because you have 11 channel processing, but only nine channel of amplification built in. So if you assign the left, right uh, front to, uh, to an external amplifier, to the pre-out only, you are able to use the two uh, other channels, amplification channels left over for uh, other purpose. So uh, I think the options we do have right now is to use them for surround uh, back and uh, height speakers. So that's the flexibility right now. An interesting yeah. question from Eric. Uh, will you consider to implement specific speaker tunings for Sound United brands like Polk, DT, and Bowers in the AVR? I think there's a slight misconception for presets. You can't really tune or do calibration for a specific speaker because it really depends on the room that you're in. The calibration Odyssey mic, or if you're using the UMIC One mic for Dirac, will analyze the room and will make the corrections for that particular speaker based on the room. So for us, there's really no point in coming up with a template or a speaker preset that would work for all rooms. Okay. Uh, what will be the sound performance from the Cinema 40 compared to the AV7706 as a preamp? <laughs> Difficult question. Um, if I want, I'm looking for a yeah, pre-amplifier, I actually would go for the AV7706 and I wouldn't go for Cinema 40 uh, in this respect. Um, if I'm looking for a solution where I only going uh, or where I need some additional amplification, which I would like to get covered by the receiver, however, I want to go for um, an installation where my front, left, right, or and, and center speaker, for example, are driven by external amp, then I would go for a Cinema 40. Um, doing here a one-to-one -one comparison, I think it's very difficult. Yeah, I totally agree. So there's a similar question for the stereo. If you're using the Cinema 50s audio quality in stereo for your two channel compared with the Model 40, for example. Again, this is comparing apples and oranges almost. One is an AVR, one is an integrated amp. Yeah, correct. Yep. Different application. Yeah. So maybe we can add uh, as an information that, of course, we always aim to get the best stereo performance as well out of our AB receivers. Because I explained in, in another webinar that when we do the sound tuning on other products, AB products, we always start with stereo tuning. Yeah, so we, we tweak the front left and right channel to a highest performance in the direction we want to have it. And then we apply all the changes made to all the rest, uh, all the other channels in the product itself. However, just comparing a stereo amplifier and an AV amplifier. Let's say the stereo amplifier is made to, for, for stereo playback. Yeah, and uh, all the money you spend, you spend on two channels. While on an AV receiver, you spend it for seven, nine, 11 channels. So you can't really compare it. You will, let's say in stereo mode, a Model 40 would always win over a Cinema 40. Okay, I think we're quite over time. I'm gonna finalize one last question. Can we store multiple calibration profiles in the AVR itself? Yes, you can do. We have this pre, uh, speaker preset one and two, and you can do one calibration file on, yeah, one on, one on each. Yes, and I think you mentioned before also that uh, Derek also has separate profiles that you can store. It is in the AVR. You so uh, I think Dirac Live can uh, store or uh, has three different sets, which you can actually uh, then also select via the AVR. 
That's very impressive. I'm very excited about these cinema series. I can't wait to hear them. Um, I'm off to Dubai next week. We're going to have a demonstration of the AV10 and M10. It's going to be rocking solid. I'm very, very excited. So with this, I'm going to hand it back over to you, Oliver, to do the closing. Yeah, I only can say thank you very much, everybody, for spending the time, even if we are running a bit over now. Uh, but I think it was very interesting, also question ask, and uh, it really gives some, some good insight. Yeah, and then I only wish you a lot of fun when you get your hands on the cinema series, because they're really awesome. Thank you very much again, and uh, thanks, Freddy, thanks, Roland, for your support, and uh, happy to see you soon. Take care, bye-bye. Bye for now.